Okay, I'll relent. I'll go ahead and get on for a second because it just takes a second to, to fire up the camera and say hello and just say a few words. Uh, you know, um, it's not unusual, but it has been a string of losses. And it's just um, par for the course. It's life. Sunday, the um, 13th of November. And... Uh, <clears throat> I'll try to speak on a couple things. The first one is that, again, we, we, we suffered another um, notable loss in the music world. Keith Levine, um, who best known for his guitar work in Public Image. Now, I don't have those records anymore, but when they came out, I bought the newspaper single, Public Image. I had that. I bought Metal Box when it came out. I still have a Public Image album. I think I have Happy don't ever play it I have it and that's what happened to the public image was that you know I absorbed it got what was going on but it's not something that I endeavor to listen to very much and so it was um, those are gone but do I recognize that Keith Levine just by his uh, approach to guitar playing in pill in particular was um, um, he he was an influencer yeah his what he did um and in the, his touch on the guitar and the way that he could make sounds notable and uh, he had some other things that he did i have a couple things that he was on that need to be mentioned this is an album from 1979 um post-punk new wave never hear it mentioned the band cowboys international the original sin Okay, so there's a, there's a, I'm reminded of the Clash connection. Terry Chimes was the drummer here. Terry Chimes was in the Clash originally. I understand that Keith Levine was in the Clash for a time. And that one of the songs that he co-wrote and got credit for is on the first Clash album. Um, What's My Name? So, um... I pulled these to share with the vinyl communities online talking about the loss, you know, of Keith Levine. And um, these these um, losses aren't to be suffered lightly. Um, uh, these people are our icons, heroes, um, influencers, just important. I need to get a refill. And so... I'll join in on the passing, uh, marking the passing of these people. I mean, that's quite a few. I, I can only, I'm not remembering everyone, but, you know, Mimi Parker, Dan McCafferty, um, Nick Turner. Um, see, I can't even remember them all, you know. Just now Keith Levine, you know, and another one before that. You know, many, actually. Um, oh, Gal Costa, good Lord, you know. And more, besides that, Tyrone Downey, see, and before the day is over, someone will pass away that may not even catch our attention, but someone who's part of the uh, vital and important history of music, which for me is my central focus and the best part. Music and art, apart from the human aspect of when you have good relationships, you know, with family, with with spouses, uh, partners, friends, your kids. You know, when that's right, you know, or even when it's not right, that's really the, the true step of life, you know, our emotional experience, you know. But the other part that really gives life color and magic is music and art. So that's where I'm coming from with the um, always wanting to talk about musicians who may be overlooked and stuff. I mentioned um, Andy Partridge's birthday, and yesterday was Neil Young's birthday. And I won't pull them all. No, that's too much. I have some, though. Excuse me. I have some Neil Young. 
And um, I've talked about Neil Young before. Neil Young is significant to me, Canadian, Canuck. Um, I've been feeling him as a person and relating to him as a person as well as loving his music since I was a teenager. That his voice, especially when I was younger, was one that spoke volumes to me. I felt his, it's like a cry, you know, it's like almost like a moan the way he sings. Significant in, in my life, I've seen Neil Young two or three times. And Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, I saw, and then I saw him solo at least once. I must admit again, there's a period of time when I was um, doing poly substances, and I do get some blurry memories. Some mem memories are very blurry. But I, I want to share that. Harvest, Neil Young, this is not my original copy. I've gone through a few, but I bought this when it came out. I taught myself how to play bass and guitar. And the first song that I was able to play all the way through was Heart of Gold from this album. And it was that was my goal. I love the song and the album. I love this album. Every track. But I love that song so much, and it was so magical to hear it on the radio. I said, I, I, can, I can get this. And it's only a few um, chords, but it was totally instructive to helping to open the door for me learning how to play. Two Nights the Night. Um, I gotta look and see. I might. Uh, yeah, no, this is not a promo. Um, cool story about this album. I, I'm not gonna try to tell it because I forget, but. That's the other thing about Neil Young's music. It, it is a, there's a lot of autobiographical um, information in his music. Someone sent this to me. It's from the Neil Young archives, Time Fades Away reissue. But I, I already had it, so I'm keeping both because this is um, a white label promo. And uh, the cover's a little, a little funky, but Neil Young on the white label, Time Fades Away. That's a nice one to have. I've said it before, but when I saw Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, it was in Houston outdoors. Jesse Colin Young and the Beach Boys opened, and everyone was really good, but when Neil Young hit the stage solo, you know, they all did solo spots, it was the atmosphere and the whole place changed. It's like you could hear a pin drop. His presence is so intense. Very powerful, very powerful. I just love him and have a lot of respect for him. Don't keep up with his records because it's too, it's way past the point where I need to be listening to more and more Neil Young. Great album. After the Gold Rush. Again, this got played on FM radio a lot and I appreciated it. And I do appreciate the song Southern Man very much appreciated it was so heartwarming when when he made that song and when i heard when you know the solidarity thank you neil american stars and bars did i pull no actually this isn't all my neil but i'll stop with whatever i have here russ never sleeps oh shit! don't forget this because i played it last night it should, yeah, there it is. Listen to this last night. Time fades away. Oh, no, no, excuse me. On the beach. On the beach, excuse me. <laughs> Two more. Landing on Water. Really don't know this album too well. And this one I have for the collection. I saw him do this. The, the time I saw him um, solo. He did a regular set, then he took a break, and then he came out and did this Neil Young and the Blue Notes. Is this it, or is it the pink thing? Or You know what I'm talking about, where he did the old-style rock. Okay. And I keep forgetting to mention that this last Bandcamp Friday was the first time that I made any purchases. And part of it was thanks to a gift from one of you, thank you, 
But one of the uh, albums that I ordered um, arrived yesterday, so I can show it. I actually haven't dropped the needle yet on this because I downloaded it as well to listen to. But it's the Orange Milk label, which I'm intrigued with. This is Diamond Soul, and the album is called Miami. Miami, but not the way you spell the city. Now, I'm intrigued with this work. And part of it is intrigued because part of what I hear with this is people playing with technology. And sometimes that's mainly what I'm hearing is that these, this person is playing with technology. Uh, faders, sliders, buttons, um, those pads. That I don't have one. Still don't have one to really learn how to use. But when it rises above them just playing with the technology is when things get interesting and there are parts of this that sound like the cover very of the moment and kind of futuristic but in a way that doesn't seem like it well well we'll see because the music electronic music in the 60s was called the music of the future but even then even though it was the beginning of it I don't know, I could almost tell even then that it would date because it has a lot of electronic music from this has dated. But not all electronic music has dated. That's why I like it so much. This I think um, will have a, a shelf life for a while. Very interesting stuff. So I want to just get on and share that with you. And um, one more record sitting out that I played almost all the way through. and. I had forgotten that these guys became the Pork Dukes, Nidralog, the Goldring Brothers, Lady Lake. This is um, Prague, where the music is better than the vocals, but it's pretty good. They're trying to get into King Crimson territory, early 70s. But interesting how this is a complete 360 from Pork Dukes, who came out during punk. I, I did buy the Pink Vinyl album, but I didn't keep it. It was kind of... Um, uh, uh, trashy sex humor, pork dukes. But this is good and an, an exceptional cover. Love that cover. Okay, so that's me on a Sunday. Hey, family. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, Karim. Hey, Adrian, if you watch. Hello, folks. I will remember to shout out. Is it Kozaletsky? I remember that name off the top of my head. So I'm shouting you out in this video. Take care, folks.